Hello, happy Thursday. I'd like to welcome everyone to uh, today's webinar. We're going to be going through Command Center from Salesforce, uh, which I'm very excited about. Um, Command Center is uh, probably one of the most mysterious uh, aspects of Salesforce that not a lot of companies have invested in, but it's really one of the most powerful. So just before we go on, a quick safe harbor. So please don't make any purchasing decisions based on forward-looking statements. You should really decide to buy software based on its current um, capability. Uh, fortunately, I am going to be showing you a live uh, kind of real production environment. So um, you'll get to see what it's really like. Uh, so we've got a lot of upcoming webinars. We are doing webinars from now until the end of the year. We've got at least one a week. I've got some highlighted here that focus on social. Um, oh, actually, next one up uh, next week, we've got Paul Cheng, who's going to be doing Why Choose Marketing Cloud, uh, and that'll include a demo. Then after that, world class social customer service, um, social customer service demo, how to calculate ROI from social, social crisis management, uh, and social hub automation demo. Um, so all of these are up on our website, afdigital.com forward slash events. Uh, we also put them all up on our YouTube channel, AF Digital, so please subscribe. It's all on there. It's all accessible. Okay, so today uh, I'm going to do a quick introduction. Uh, then we'll go into a command center demo, 15 minutes. Um, we'll talk quickly about how to operationalize it and then give you guys the opportunity to ask any questions. Please don't hesitate to follow me on Instagram and Twitter, Robin underscore AFD. I always post whenever I'm doing events and webinars. Uh, great, so a quick intro about me. Um, I'm C CEO and co-founder of AF Digital. Uh, my background was customer service with Vodafone a long time ago, then I became a business analyst. Uh, I rolled out Siebel uh, across three countries. It was a $500 million project with um, uh, Vodafone. I was the lead business analyst. That gave me a really deep CRM experience, and I later went on to do a lot of BI projects as well. Uh, I later uh, went to the Philippines and was an agile PM under IBM, which led me on to start this business. I've always been passionately geeky about technology, especially the intersect between marketing and technology. I find that's a really sexy spot. Uh, AF Digital was founded in 2011. We have been a partner of Salesforce since 2012, uh, starting off originally as a Radian 6 partner. So uh, social is very much part of our DNA from the start. Um, and we've spent the last six years helping large companies adopt social at scale using the latest technology. Uh, so AF Digital, we are your trusted marketing partner. We help our clients build smarter customer journeys through agile transformation, scalable marketing operations, and marketing technology consulting. Uh, we're trusted by household brands across APAC. Uh, we've worked with a lot of really large scale enterprise clients. Uh, and often we help them scale across the region um, because a lot of people have regional requirements. We've got offices in Singapore, Philippines, and Australia. Uh, not only are we a Salesforce partner, we're also a tech-enabled full-service digital agency. So we do email marketing, social content, reporting, uh, marketing automation, and one-to-one -one advertising. Okay, so without any further ado, I had to do that stuff. Um, let's talk about Command Center. So why do you need a Command Center? This is kind of three major reasons. So the first is really deliver digital insights. So it's really just to understand what's going on in the digital world. There's kind of a, a real world and a digital world, and they, they both go together. Um, without anything exposing that information, there's a lot happening that we don't have access to. Uh, which leads on to the, the second point, highlight your customer's voice. Uh, there's so many customers out there, and it's really hard for you to uh, have a macro view about what they're all saying um, and be able to drill down uh, from macro to micro to be able to help some customers out if they really need uh, help. So uh, command centers really um, allow you to expose all of that, um, make it really front of mind for, uh, for staff, um, which leads on to the final point is aligning employees on key metrics. And this, for me, is really the biggest takeaway. This is the biggest uh, benefit. Is just that it's just a reflection of what your teams are working on and what they're doing. This uh, a command center allows that to be exposed back to them. Uh, you know, this is the response from your customer. Um, it also because you've got set uh, metrics that you look at every day. It makes those metrics super important, and people start to care about them. Um, so, and you'll get a feel for that as you go along. 
But it's really, uh, you know, a lot of people hesitate to um, invest in a command center because they're like, well, what's the ROI? How are my teams going to use it to do anything differently? Um, and the thing is, it's not, a, it's not really for users to use and do stuff with. It's not a functional system. It's more of a, it's like a digital report to say, guys, this is what's going on online right now. Um, I think one of the things that made it really awesome, especially in just the last year, uh, initially the command center started off as a social command center, uh, and that was really its, its kind of go to market. It was attached to Radiant 6 originally, which is now called Social Studio. Um, so it was really just this one in integration, and we could listen in to what people were saying about uh, brands all over the world, which is really powerful. Um, but it's gone way beyond that. So over the last year, they've been adding integrations, adding dashboards. What we can see now is we've got Sales Cloud and Service Cloud integrated into Command Center as well. So I can see my uh, sales team performance. Who are my top salespeople? What are my top sales opportunities? I can see that also in Command Center. Um, service Cloud, which is where you generally do your customer service. So you can show all of your cases and your, um, your top agents and the agent response time and who's doing all the work. It's really beautiful. I'll show you that. Um, and we've got Social Studio already, and those dashboards are awesome. Um, and we've got all these new dashboards from Marketing Cloud. Um, so there's like email, uh, sorry, marketing journeys. So you can see which journey automations are working, which are not working. How are they each performing to their goals? Uh, so it visualizes those because, you know, it's really scary to run automations without visibility over what's going on. Um, not only that, but it also has all of your email marketing sends. You can have dashboards for those, as well as um, advertising uh, studio as well, which I can't show you today, unfortunately. So uh, let's just jump straight in. Um, and what I've got is, uh, okay, I'm just going to show you the admin. So this is um, what an administrator would see. It's really easy to set up. There's no uh, code required. It's, it's super simple. So um, if I was to create a new screen, it's as simple as going, okay, I want, uh, I want to see where in the world. And then I'll say AF Digital Add Source. And then these are all topic profiles that I've already set up in Social Studio. So I'm just going to say... Uh, that was the topic profile. I set the time range to the last seven days, um, and I can choose world or US. Unfortunately, I haven't got new countries here. Um, and it's as simple as creating a new dashboard and then opening it. Uh, and it's literally that easy. There's obviously a bit of a bit you have to be aware of. Oh, look at this Paul Chang. Not too late to register. Um, it's it's. Yeah, it's just really easy. There's lots of things you can do to customize it. You can set themes, uh, color palettes. Uh, you can see we've got a bunch of themes here. Um, and you can play around with these. I'm actually presenting today in the standard Social Studio theme. This is the original theme. It's actually my favorite. I've tried a bunch of different others, but I really like this one. Um, you can add colors. Uh, you can add branding around keywords. Um, you can do custom headings for the dashboards, and there's a profanity filter as well, so you don't show bad stuff, um, especially if you're presenting this in your lobby or in front of other customers. So, so this is the administration section, and it's really as simple as this. Um, you don't really need a certification to be able to set this up. You just need a bit of common sense and uh, maybe the ability to use uh, help. So I have set up a webinar demo slider. So this is actually a slider of um, it was about uh, probably about 13 or 14 different dashboards in the slider. Um, and this is just going to rotate around. So I'm just going to open this up. I've actually got one preloaded here. So um, each of these uh, dashboards is going to sit on it for about 20 seconds. So um, I'm just going to describe what each of them are until I think until we go through them all. Uh, so this this one that it's loading up now is top images. Uh, so that's showing activity from the last seven days. Sometimes it takes a little while to load up. Oh no, this is terrible demo demo scenario. Okay, we'll go go back to that one. Social care. Okay, so this comes from Salesforce Service Cloud. So this actually shows um, all of the inbound cases 
by time. There's been 48 new cases. Um, we've got an SLA, and you can set this. We've got a two-hour SLA, and it actually shows the SLA in color against each channel. Um, so we'll, we'll come back to that one. Um, this one is email performance. So this shows me um, how many people have sent, delivered, opened, clicked. And I can look at the different emails I've sent recently. So this gives you a really good impression on which emails have been going out, how successfully they are. I can see, oh my god, is there a big unsubscribe rate? Uh, this, this is actually Journey Builder. So this is from Marketing Cloud. Um, and this is four different journeys. So I can drill into the journey, and I can see here that it's got a 41% performance, uh, 46,000 entries. And you can also see the different versions of the same journey. Uh, so this is a social universe. So this actually shows three social listening topic profiles. I can see if it's green, it's positive. If it's red, it's negative. Um, and I can drill in. So I can actually drill in and have a look and see what, what are people saying. Top five keywords, gold. We just became gold status. Um, so this, this dashboard is a word cloud. So this shows the top 50 keywords. Uh, and this is actually related to AF Digital, uh, my company. So you can see here, and I can zoom in on stuff and get a better, better understanding. So I can see here that there's been these um, posts about us being a gold partner. We just announced that uh, last week. And this is a talk of the town. So this shows the kind of top influences and conversations happening around a specific topic online. Uh, so um, as you can see, if I, I can actually click on anyone, and I can see kind of the, the trending and top posts. Uh, this is showing um, what's going on across Salesforce, actually, in the last uh, three days. So, and I can filter in on this. So I can say, okay, if I want to show Sales Cloud, we've got a spike here. And oh, we've gone to the next one. So I've probably got it set a bit quickly. It's going through every 20 seconds. But we'll go through this twice. Um, and you'll get a better feel for it. This is the feed wall. So this shows general posts around the topic profile. This just helps give your team a better understanding of what's happening. I can drill into to anything, but that's about as much as I can do. Um, this is where in the world. Uh, this will show um, you know, the major countries where there's activity happening. Uh, so this is really great for global brands where they just want to see you know, there's uh, something, something's going on in UK. Oh, top images. For some reason, this one's not working. I probably just need to refresh it uh, in the admin. So just bear with me for a second. Oh, there we go. Okay, it started loading. Okay, so this is just like the feed wall. It just shows top images. Um, so again, um, this is social customer care. So um, this shows all the cases by channel, um, cases according to SLA, and top closes as well. So it's really... Uh, it really brings what you're doing in social customer care to the forefront, which is really powerful. Um, again, here is the email performance. So uh, it's got how many were sent, how many were delivered, how many were opened. And I can look at the different emails and get a preview of them as well to understand what's really gone, gone on. This is really great because often a marketer doesn't have the detailed visibility over what's being sent out day to day. Uh, journey performance, yeah, so um, this like this shows all of the journeys, so we can see if a journey is healthy. So one journey is one automation, um, and then you can drill into a journey and then see you know, if, it's, um, if it's doing well and what the details are. This is really great because you don't want journeys to be running without your awareness, um, and this just brings that to the forefront. Uh, so again, um, social universe, so the bigger they are, the more is going on. And if they're, again, green, that's positive. So we can kind of see here, you can do a little bit of investigation after this, but you can see that Sales Cloud is really like the most talked about uh, recently. And here is uh, a word cloud. This is the top 50 keywords uh, mentioned. And again, you can kind of go in there. Uh, command send is really powerful if it's a touch screen because it really invites interaction. You know, you can't do too much on here. It's not like a, a big system that you can drill into. 
Oh, look, Mark Benioff, Salesforce number one in marketing, sales, and service. So this, this allows us to really highlight who the key influencers are, and it just kind of gives us a feel of the major conversations that are happening right now. Uh, and again, these are, this is all live data. Um, I, I really like this one, actually. This is a, um, a great one. You can kind of play around with the data and really say, okay, I want to look at sales cloud. I want to look at this point, and it will show me the word cloud for that point in time. In the feed wall. I think we've we've almost done a full loop, um, but it's quite mesmerizing. You know, you can have this up anywhere, and you can just stare at it. You know, it's just like, you know, a lot a lot goes on online that we're just not aware of. Um, the the different views they've created have tried to summarize that information uh, as as effectively as possible. Uh, so yeah, it's um it's. It's quite an interesting tool to have up. It's definitely very sexy to show off. Uh, what we find is that you know the C-suite love it because they they look really connected to their customer. They show it off to anyone that comes into the room. You know, it's a really great talking point. It's really interesting. It's it's quite a cool toy as well. You know, it's really a big boy's toy of the C-suite. Um, but not only in the C-suite, it's also really effective in your team. You know, like for a customer service team, and I want to know who's closing all my social cases and what their um, SLAs are. So it's really uh, directly relevant at an operational level, but it's also great for strategic decision makers and thinkers that just want to understand, you know, what is going on, like what's going out there in my marketing, what emails am I sending, and are they getting a good response? What journeys am I running? Um, and are they red, amber, or green? Um, so this kind of um, intelligence, uh, it's now possible. We've got all of the technology. With Salesforce, it's all relatively connected together. You know, all of those clouds talk to each other, and it gives you the ability to, um, to really get one view of your customer. Uh, and you don't have to build this. As I showed you earlier in the, um, in the settings, it's super simple to set up. The hardest part is actually just setting up the infrastructure of the screens, which I'll talk about in a bit. Great, so just going back to the um, presentation. Um, so there are a couple of dashboards I couldn't show you. So this is a top sales opportunities dashboard. I had to kind of go over some of the names and logos um, so that you didn't see. It's a little bit sensitive. But this shows you, um, you know, what are the hot opportunities, the biggest are the hottest. Um, and what stage in the sales cycle are they? So, um, and who's working on them? So it really exposes that sales team. You know, often when you go to your sales team, it's like, what are your hot opportunities? They're like, well, I've got 10 that I'm working on. I don't really know off the top of my head. This allows you to really point to them and show them to everyone and say, look, this is my hot opportunity. I've got one on this leaderboard. Um, this also shows, and I've had to wipe out some numbers as well again, but this shows the sales leaderboards. So this shows you who your top salespeople are. Pauline, of course, is number one <laughs> by default in our company. She always sells the most. I'm number three. Um, but yeah, so it, it just kind of it just exposes that and it brings it front to mind. It makes it very easy. So how to operationalize command center? So um, first point, don't overthink it. We're just exposing data. That's pretty much it. It's as simple as that. We're just showing it. Um, two, uh, and this I think is really important, is to establish a center of excellence or an innovation space in your business and start there. Put it up there as the first place. Um, if you don't have a department in your company that's starting to own digital marketing and digital transformation, it's really time you got one. Like everyone, every company needs to think about having some capability in house um, and not 100% working with partners. Uh, it's good to establish your own center of excellence. Uh, third point dedicate IT budget for maintenance. So, I mean, you can do it on a shoestring, it's totally possible. It's literally just buying a TV and connecting it to a computer. Uh, but um, if you really want to make it successful, then you need to make sure you have someone to administer it. Uh, you need to, you know, obviously pay for the licenses, have um, enough TV screens so it's usable, uh, etc., and have someone that's responsible for maintaining those. And, 
administering the screens. You know, if they don't work or if they get turned off and no one turns them back on, um, then obviously you're not getting the ROI from your investment. Uh, number four, okay, set up your command center everywhere. So it is cloud software. They don't charge licenses based on how many times you use it in your company. Uh, caveat on that, sales will don't get in trouble. I'm pretty sure they don't. Um, so once you've got the license, set it up in your C-suite. Like have a big screen in your CEO's office and your CMO and your COO. Uh, you know, give them all a big screen. Um, have have six or eight or twelve up in your center of excellence or command center space. Um, have two or three up in your lobby. Um, make sure you have a couple up in your marketing teams, your service teams, your sales teams, and then have a pop up stand that's ready to take to events as well and showcase how you're listening to your customers and how you're uh, putting your customers at the center of your world, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, so these are the general use cases. Uh, so, I mean, the, the biggest expense, aside from the licenses, is really just buying the TVs and the, um, the laptop, and it's really simple requirements. Um, so, after that, step five is really ongoing training and enablement. Um, the, the best way that you can guarantee uh, successful adoption is by training people on how to use it, and training people on on how to get value from it, and then they'll start using it and adopting it naturally, and it will become an important business tool, as opposed to something like an add-on that's like an optional nice to have. It'll start being really important uh, because you're you're not going to be using your software efficiently um, without this, you know, without exposing this data. Uh, my business partner always says, "What you can't measure, you can't manage," um, and with all this new cloud software. Stuff's happening unless someone's reading reports. It's very hard to see what's going on. Uh, great. Okay, so physical setup. Um, so and it's really simple. Like you just you don't even need to overthink this. To be honest, you can just map out. This is what I think some of the dashboards I'll have up. Um, and then it's really just like HDMI cables, um, a USB hub. Um, and that's and and that's like how you have the adapter for the multiple screens, um, and then six times sixty inch screens, a uh, hundred hundred inch touch screen is like the mecca of command center screens. Like that that's awesome if you can afford it. I think it's like several grand, like maybe ten grand. Um, but if not, just like sixty inch screens are good. Um, and then you just need one laptop, like one MacBook MacBook uh, Air. You know, a thousand dollar MacBook. Um, and you've got this eight port hub and the cables and then boom, you, you're all good to go. Uh, computer requirements, I mean a basic computer has all of these things. So it's nothing, nothing really rocket science. You don't need a lot of infrastructure. It probably just needs access to the internet as well. Um, so, and again, I, I just want to emphasize it. Don't overthink the command center or the ROI behind it. Don't overthink it. You're spending a lot of money on having other people use the software like Sales Cloud, like Service Cloud, like Marketing Cloud, Social Studio. Um, they're all using it independently and there's no one place where someone's getting a report or someone's looking at everything. Um, nor do you want someone that is looking at reports that much. So it's really about uh, driving adoption. It's about making it easy to understand when there's a problem or when it's good. Um, dashboards, are, I mean, we all know it's really the future. Uh, yeah, I can't really emphasize as much more than that. Um, so we've got five minutes left. Uh, welcoming questions. Okay, we've got um, some questions. So Zyron, hi Robin, does the command center auto refresh to show real time or near real time data? Yes, it does, Zyron. Um, it's like, yeah, relatively fast, I think. The, so my screens were changing every 20 seconds, um, but the refresh, it's within a minute or so from social media. Uh, and the 30 second auto refresh is configurable. Yes. Uh, so I could, I should, probably should have said that at 45 seconds. Um, so you can do like 45 second, one minute, two minute, three minutes, uh, I think up to five minutes per screen. 
Uh, can users create their own custom views? Oh yes, that's a really good question. I didn't go over this. In the latest uh, release of Command Center, they actually allow you to um, to embed a web page into your uh, Command Center. So um, I can't remember the exact words on how how it's, what it's called, but um, so I guess the use case would be if you had a Microsoft Power BI or a Tableau. Um, dashboard that you want to expose in Salesforce Command Center, you could absolutely do that. Yeah, very good question. Um, in terms of configuring the existing dashboards, they're all fairly locked. You can configure them all with look and feel, so you can change the colors, uh, headings, things like that. Um, but generally, the, the way they work and the navigation is all fairly locked. There's not much to configure there. Uh, demographic dashboard, yes, uh, good question, um, Sheetal. So, uh, honestly, the, my honest answer to that is the demographic dashboard just doesn't work. Um, I believe it's because it's tied to Radian 6 demographics insights, which I just don't use anymore. I'm, I'm waiting for them to come into, um, into Social Studio, hopefully soon. So, um, if you were to do that, or if you were to figure it out, maybe I just don't know how to do it, is you would use conference, uh, which I'm showing now, and I can have age and gender here, um, and then you'd, you'd select topic profile. I probably just, I think you probably just need to turn the um, demographic insight on in Radiant 6 for this topic profile, and then maybe it would work. Um, but I, Radiant 6 is being kind of uh, decommissioned at the moment. Uh, yes, there will be a session, Alfred, um, and the recording will be made, it'll be made available almost immediately after and go to webinar if you use the same link, um, but we'll also put it onto our YouTube page, AF Digital. Great, and Zaren, yes, let's catch up next time in Singapore. Awesome. Uh, unless there's any other questions. Oh, okay, we've got a couple more. Is Command Center solely a data visualization tool only? And if the business units have to react, they will have to go back to Sales Cloud, Service Cloud, Social Studio accordingly. Yes, uh, Zaren, that's correct. Um, you can't act. You can kind of drill down to a certain extent to understand more, but to take action, you'd, you'd immediately go back to Social Studio or Sales Cloud or Service Cloud or Marketing Cloud and make the fix. Yeah, good question. Great. Any other questions? Uh, is the license a per user basis? Yep, that's also a really good question. Um, no, I, I don't believe the license is a per user basis. It's similar to Social Hub. And that if you've got a social studio license, anyone can go and log into the same to the instance and create their own kind of configuration. Um, so I've got this configuration under my personal social studio account. My team has a different one. I can't access their dashboards and they can't access my dashboards. So it is a it, the configuration is per user. There's no shared configurations, and it's not limited by the license as far as I know. Um, in terms of the number of users, but it's best to check with the AE. Um, my licensing is a little bit different because I'm a, I'm a partner, but that's my understanding. Uh, it's a good question though. Great, no problem. Excellent. Uh, one more minute. Any further questions? Is the program server-based, or do we have to download the software? Yep, that's also a great question. No, there's no software download. It's all 100% cloud. Um, so you just log in. Uh, I usually use Chrome, um, but I think it works on most browsers. Uh, it also works on iPad as well, although I, I don't own an iPad, so I can't show you that. But apparently it does, which is quite cool. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much. Uh, great webinar. Please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I'll put this on YouTube. Um, it'll also be available at the GoToWebinar link. Uh, and other than that, have a great Thursday and enjoy the rest of your week.